Hello and welcome again. Last time we talked about this very important theorem here, who said that uh, the greatest common divisor be between two integers is can be always expressed as a multiple of the first integer plus a multiple of the second integer. And uh, we also saw that uh, it is possible to find S and T. Now, we did, actually went through the computations but we look at the example we did at the last video. We computed the greatest common, greatest common divisor of 120 and 84. We got a 12. And so what the theorem says here is that this number 12 is a multiple of 120 and a multiple of 84. So that means 12, the greatest common divisor, is a multiple of 120, 120s plus 84t. And if you go ahead and check these two values, s equals a negative 2 and t equals 3, that will work. Now, but how do we arrive to those numbers? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to arrive to these two numbers here if we already computed the greatest common divisor between the numbers 120 and 84. So I'm going to come back exactly to the same example we did last time. So let's recall that. Uh, so that's what I wrote here. So we can find s and t from the previous process, from the process that we found the greatest common divisor between 120 and 84, using basically the Euclidean algorithm. So let me recall what I did. So last time what we did was something like this. Uh, remember what you do is you take the large number, 120, divided by the smaller number. Uh, this computation we did the last time, so I'm just gonna write it down over here. If you want, you can go ahead and watch the previous video to see exactly what we did over there. So this is the just the normal division. So 84 into 120 is one time, subtract 84, you get 36, that's the remainder. And you stop there because the remainder here, this part, this number is less than the divisor. Now, there is one extra step you need to do here to be able to find the S and T is you're gonna write down this in terms of the division algorithm. So what I mean by that is this. Once I have this, what it means that I have, this is the quotient is one, the remainder is 36. Now remember what we said earlier is that uh, the number 120 is always the quotient times the divisor plus the remainder. So I'm going to write down that equation. So I'm going to write it down just in numbers here. So basically what it says is that I have 120. I can express it as uh, 84 times 1 plus 36. Now that equation that I'm I'm writing down over there is just basically this uh, expression that is right here again. So 120 is 84 times 1, so it's the divisor times the quotient plus the remainder. Now we're going to use this later. So this is an important equation here. The first thing you want to do here is actually uh, s write down this equation in some other way. Now, in which way? Look, so let's look at this guy here. 36 is the remainder. You always want to solve for the remainder, meaning that I'm going to isolate the 36 in this case. So if I isolate the 36, meaning that I have to go ahead and subtract 84 times 1. Now again, don't do the operation, just leave it indicated. So I'm going to write down, in this case, I'll have 120 minus 84 times 1 is equal to 36. And now this is an important equation we'll use later. So I'm going to mark that down. Now, that was the first step of the division algorithm. The only extra thing that I did here was adding this extra information. This is what we did before. Now, if you remember what we did before, we also, what you do after that is you take the, this number, here the divisor, and divide it by the remainder. That will be the next step, step two. So it'll be 84 divided by 36. And this expression, and this is a calculation that you see here, this is what we did. So 84 divided by 36 gives me quotient two and remainder 12. I'm going to write down an equation exactly like this one here now for this case. So what I can write down here is the following thing. I can say 84 is equal to 36 times 2 plus the remainder. Now that equation again that is here is just another way to say what I already have over here. Let's do exactly the same as we did over here. I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this for the remainder. So what I'm going to get is the following thing. I'm going to get 84 min, uh, minus 36 times 2 equals to 12. And I'm going to mark that down. 
I'm going to mark it with, uh, with this square here. All right. Now, the last step is where we realize that we had the, the greatest common divisor was 12 because when we did it, then we had the remainder equals zero. So this is the greatest common divisor. So you're gonna stop. The last step, you don't have to write down this equation. Just stop before the previous step to write down this equation. Now, what you have to do here is the following thing. You're gonna refer now back to the equation that you marked down as here in the boxes because the important thing is the last equation has the greatest common factor here. Now, what's going to happen here, here is the following thing. I'm going to replace everything I have backwards. So I'm going to start from this equation that I have here. So I'm going to rewrite it again. Again, you all do all these things. So you, uh, these are the original steps of the uh, Euclidean algorithm. You just write down these boxes and extra information, but you don't write down the, the, very, last, uh, the very last one, so just the previous one. So I'm going to start from here, from the very last one that I have here. So I'm going to write down the following thing. What do I have? I have that 12 is equal to 84 minus 36 times 2. So 12, let me write that down. 12 is equal to, let me recall here, is 84 minus uh, 36 times 2. That's exactly the equation I have over here. Now, in the next step, I'm going to replace uh, the previous one. So what am I going to replace? 36. So in the equation that is here, I'm going to replace this 36 that you see here, which should appear in the previous one as a remainder. I'm going to replace it over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this 36 by this quantity. By the quantity, 36 is 120 minus 84 times 1. So I'm going to replace that in here. So what I have here is 12 equals to 84 minus. And remember here, the one that I'm going to replace is this number 36. And remember 36, I replace it from, from this equation that I have here, which is 120 minus 84 times 1. So I'm going to replace it. I'm going to open a parenthesis there. So I'm going to say 120 minus 84 times 1. Now, don't do the operations here. Just leave it indicated, times 2. Now, this number that I have here, this one, is exactly 36. Let me say that again. 36 is equal to this one. And that replacement came from replacing backwards this guy that is right here. So I start from here, and I replace the remainder. So whatever this number is here, the remainder, I replace it over there. Now, what I'm going to do here uh, to arrive to my conclusion is I'm going to multiply... I'm going to distribute it here by 2, being careful not to uh, perform some of the operations here. So what do I have? So I have 12 equals to 84. And if I multiply by 2, then uh, what I'm going to get is the following things. I'm going to get uh, minus. The minus that is up front here, remember, because this is a minus, is going to affect the product. So it's going to give me minus... 2 times 120, that's 120 here, not a 28, 120. And then this minus, with this minus, and that 2 gives me 284 plus 284. 2 times 84. It looks like 284, but it's 2 times 84. Now, what I can see here is I can collect the 84s in here. So that's going to give me 184 plus 284s. That gives me 384. So basically what I have here is I have my minus 2 times 120 plus uh, 84 times 3. And again, the reason it is 3 is because I have 284s plus 184. I have 384s. And as you can see there, I actually arrived to the decomposition. I have 12. And this expression that I have here, I can rewrite it as... 120 times negative 2 plus 84 times 3. And these guys that are here are really the, this is the S and the T we were looking for, which is exactly what we mentioned in the previous video. Let me scroll the way up here. 
so the s is a negative 2 and the 3 is 3 the t is 3 okay this example is uh so it's very short and the reason it's short is because i have only two uh things that i have to use here so what i'm gonna do in the next video is i'm gonna show you a, a very a little bit longer example so you can actually get the the idea on how to get the greatest common divisor as a multiple of the first number plus a multiple of the second number and that can always always be done because of the theorem the only thing we're doing here is finding those as and t. So I will stop the video now and in the next video I'm going to show you another example of exactly the same thing of writing down the greatest common divisor as a combination of the original numbers. So I'll see you in the next video.